Hey, my name is Hasnizam. I'm from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I'm from Colombia. And I'm from India. From Illinois in the United States. From Hong Kong. From Athens, Greece. From Georgia. Finland. From Romania. And I'm from Costa Rica. the world to take action. Integrate the youth into the structures and integrate the youth into the decision-making process. To get aware of their responsibility. To believe in young people. And the really important message is that young people are not only the leaders of tomorrow, they're also leaders of today. I'm calling the youth to actually move. I'm calling the youth to take ownership. Uh, raise up issues from some that are active. Because we're the youth and we're here to make a change. I'm ready for taking action and stop complaining. I'm ready to challenge myself. I'm ready to start. Are you ready for us? Are youth ready for their own talent? Are adults ready to see youth as key stakeholders and not mere resources? And are society ready for what's emerging, what's coming right now? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's a pleasure for me to be here. And today what I would like to do is to share with you about Creative Society, but mostly the RUD for us. We called RUD for us based on that question. How can we generate the right ecosystem for young people to thrive and in social entrepreneurship and mostly collaborate with adults? Based on this, I'm going to share three stories, three inspiring stories from all the stories that we generate around the world to share with you. And mostly we're really, really keen to meet young entrepreneurs from our side, from Muslim world, to inspire other part of society and the rest of the world. I'm gonna share what's the radical system, but mostly what are the three key skills studying in young people that generated amazing ideas, huge impact without asking permission in society. The first one I wanna share is Rocco. Rocco started planting promise. He was a young student with 16 years old, did not accept what happened in Sierra Leone, and decided to produce, to start a story, an exchange between teachers from Sierra Leone and from UK. He rapidly realized that the problem was not the teachers. Teachers are amazing in Sierra Leone. The problem was access to school. So what he decided to do is to start a social entrepreneurship company. He bought lands in Sierra Leone, partnership with local farms where they dedicated part of the profit to build schools. At 22 years old, he has more than 500 students, three schools, and mostly generated cyber cafes, but also plants that process food with those small entrepreneurs in Sierra Leone. With him, we learned the first key thing about young people from all around the world that we need to foster. They care. Young people truly care about what's going around them. They really care about what's, what's in our society, the challenges that we're facing. They are married people. They don't like status quo, but mostly they act. They don't want to wait. They want to act. Caring, first set. Second set, Pedro. Pedro is like living in a small city lost in Spain. And he went to the internet and found an article saying that we can create clean water through plants. There's a scientific individual, scientist, that said, it's possible. This is what you can do. So this young man, at 17 years old, started to study the plant and decided to start his own company. And hiring his first employee was his father. He hired his father as the first employee. He has now... Aquafitex, four plants around the world, two in South America, two in Africa. But the most important thing is that he helps 
small communities growing those plants so they can, by themselves, generate water, clean water by themselves. The second thing we can see that we need to foster in young people is curiosity. Curiosity is the seed of innovation. Curiosity to explore, curiosity to experiment, and to have this great critical thinking. Our young people want to learn in a different way. Not in a small school, but they want to learn by doing things. That's why MIT or Harvard, if you want to study now online, Harvard or MIT, you can do it for free. You have access to all their classes. The only thing you would not have access to the diploma, but open knowledge. Because we know that open knowledge is the first step, but connecting will be the second step. Caring curiosity. Now I'm going to share the third story, Leila. Leila travels between Mumbai and San Francisco. When she went to Mumbai, she went to the slum. And this one little man said, I'm tired that I have only two opportunities in life because I live from the slum. Or work in agriculture, or work in crafting art. When, what I want to do is technology. So she started to think about that, and she decided to build a small organization that provides in the slums, but also in refugee camps, space room with computers, what people learn bureaucratic. So what you do is that you send your PowerPoint presentation, people will design it for you, and after that, they're going to control it. So what she decided to do was to set the control office, the quality control, in San Francisco, hire clients from San Francisco, ship this in all Africa. People do it, receive the money for it, and she send it back to the clients. She has as client Google, Facebook, all major organizations. That's what she did. Supporting young people in refugee camps, having another skill set. So what do we learn from her? We learn that young people want to build community. They are amazing connectors. And we saw with the social media. We don't need to talk about Twitter and those kind of things. But they're amazing connectors. They're generous people. Like they go beyond who they are. And those stories, we have so many. We're traveling around the world to do those kind of stories, to hear those kind of stories, because there's so many simple ideas. Those people didn't ask to be shared like this. They're not like amazing people. They're simple people, simple youth people that decided to take action without waiting for permission. We went to Africa. We were in Kuala Lumpur. Inshallah, we hope to be somewhere else with you guys. But what is the ecosystem? And when we talk about ecosystem, what do you mean by ecosystem? First, we need to identify what's the core, the center of it, the purpose. What makes you stand up? What's the cause you want to stand up and work for it? Let's unite adults and young people around it. Let's bring individual, shift the mindset so people can understand that they can bring the change. And there are a lot of people who are doing it with primary schools. If we teach our teacher in primary schools to guide our young kids to take a challenge in their own environment and solve it, they're going to feel so proud. They're going to feel the power of what they can do, and they're going to start believing that they can change things. Mind shifting in small schools. Kindergarten even though. And we're already doing many places around the world. The second thing is that if you have the right mindset, we need spaces, totally different spaces that, are, that allow the people to really do things differently. Because we do not lack amazing people with amazing ideas. What we lack is spaces that allow people to connect differently, bring together, and have spaces that allow them to create those labs and take risks. In the Hub Madrid, I'm going to share a short and fast story. We ask our members, young people, to say, who do you admire that we need to bring in our space? And someone said, bring us the best dermatologist. We brought the best dermatologist, but the young man was not there, <laughs> unfortunately. But another young man was there. 
so the dermatologist was trying to make coffee. He didn't know how the machine was working. So a young man helped him. When the young man helped him, he said, oh, what do you do? Man said, I'm dermatologist. And what do you do? I do apps. You do what? Apps. So what we saw, we saw an interesting conversation going on. We hosted that conversation. What was the key insight? Dermatology, diagnostic, physical diagnostic, or true picture is the same. Click in the head, connecting people differently, new perspective, new idea. First worldwide app for doctors on dermatology. Connecting people differently, that's what we need to create. And when we have those spaces, we need to bring practice. Tools so people they can create and generate those ideas and grow it differently. And finally, community. If we push forward, if we are able to connect, we have this great community. So what did they ask? If, when we ask young people that are thriving, having amazing projects around the world, what do you need? They don't say money. They don't say network. They ask from society. Trust and belief and care. That's what they're asking. And from there, they are able to move forward because they need to sustain their own self-trust. And we need to join them in this. And when we have this, they're going to find the people. They're going to find the money. And they're going to be creative on this. Because money, you can buy ideas. Yes, you can buy ideas. But you cannot buy the experience that generate that great idea. And that's what we need to understand. The difference of buying ideas or generating ideas. So here's the word youth. And we're talking about young entrepreneurs. But we need to remember in the word youth, there's you. And we're all young at heart. And we all have these thriving ideas. And we need to understand that we can do it totally differently. The only thing we need to have is to dare to connect. Dare to connect adults with young people. They ought to have the courage as adults to follow young people and involve them in our own project. They asked me to stop here because we want to generate a debate and want to talk about the hub and other amazing spaces and go down on the field. They brought you three cards. You have three cards, right? There's you have three cards? Pink? Yes? Who doesn't have cards? Who have cards? Yellow? Pink? Green? Perfect. What we would like you to do rapidly, because we need to have... Change it? Okay. In the pink card, in the pink card, we would like you to write down what is one skill that young people need to build what, or one attitude in your community, in your country, so they can thrive. On the green one, we would like you to write on the green one, what is the one thing that society, your society needs to bring to the young people so they can regenerate the right ecosystem? What do we need to build? And the third one, write me your question. Those questions, we have a limited question now because we only have 30 minutes left. But we're going to try to answer them online. So please just take two minutes. Write the first answer that comes from your heart, not the right answer. Look for the true answer that comes from your heart so we can truly understand our own communities. And after that, we're going to open the floor for you guys. Great? Two minutes. And after we're going to pass the microphone. Think what is the one skill, one attitude that we need to foster in your young Muslim community. Write big, write clear. Can we have pink and green cards here, please? The right green, pink. <laughs> a 
Let's be creative. Who has the pink one ready? Raise your card. The pink one is ready. Okay. Who has the green one ready? Who has the yellow, yellow one ready? Who's still thinking? Okay, the count doesn't work. Okay. So let's start first to hear. I want to hear two or three pink and two and three green. So just would be aware of that. Okay. I will go for the questions. Please make sure that you fill out those cards. It's very, very important. Who want to share a pink card? Pink, one, two. Am I going over there? Selfless. It's not. Selfless is important. I mean, stop being selfish, not only for yourself, but for, for the benefit of others. So it's important. Cultivate, bring to the, the purpose to our people, not only for us, through the people. Creating wealth, I will receive wealth. Is that right? Thank you. I believe the key attitude is that the youth must, giving, must be given the thinking skills, the desire to do some destiny making. Destiny making. I'm going to go on the other side. That's why I don't have a jacket, because I need to run. Just to be uh, original, because I, I think the youth really, in this generation, they have lacking this thing. I mean, uh, yeah. You need to be original. Pink one? It's, uh, it's uh, business planning. Putting the business into the, putting the business idea into the business plan, because usually they have idea, but when it comes to implementation, it's very weak. Biggest challenge to bring ideas into action, to a business plan. Let's go with the green one. Let's see what do we need from society to nurture our ecosystem. Firstly, I think to, um, to address a problem, we need to have sufficient awareness of the problem. So it's generating that far-reaching awareness that everyone realizes that there is a problem before we can address the actual problem. It's very interesting. How do we make visible as a society the problem that we have? In different cities, for example, in Madrid, we have a wall, a city wall, that when you look at it, people can raise there a challenge. And all the citizens can see it. So how can we make it visible to you, the other ones? Another green card? We'll go green card. Not the green card for the U.S., but the green card. Yeah. Second green card? Over there. Go there. Yeah. Our mosque should be the place not only for a prayer, also for social guidance center for the young generation. That's true. Like our mosques were great places to think, to create. So we need to generate those spaces for young people with adults to think and create. I will then come back to you. I think the society should have more tolerance towards failure. So it's okay to fail. Uh, it's not something you, you did. Uh, it's like a crime. So you will be depressed and uh, from doing uh, new things. We need, not, we need to sustain failure. And, and to when we sustain failure is, is sustain audacity. We can make mistakes. What we need to understand is that a failure is our incapacity to build on our mistake. And what is a mistake? It's an information that tells us that our hypothesis was not right. So it clarifies the future. Mistakes as solution clarify the future. So we need to learn from mistakes, and we need to learn from our solutions. And our failures are incapacity to learn from them. So we need to be audacious on this, and that's really true. One over there, and after I will go with the question. 
I think we need a good place to educate and to teach young people in a creative way. Uh, a good place to educate people, young people, in a creative way. Have you heard about Team Academy? And that's totally right. Team Academy, Finland. Go online, look to that school. Team Academy is based that if you want to start a business or you want to study commerce, start a business. So the teachers are not there to teach you. They are there to support you. So when you need to face finance in your plan, now you have the finance support. They're like consultants. So what's funny is that when students finish the, the fourth year, they already have four or five employees or, or already have like a good profit in their organization. So how can we transform schools, universities, into designing, exploring, not learning by doing, learning by exploring. Because learning by doing is, this is how I do it, learn from me. But the future, subhanAllah, we don't know it about it. So we need to learn to explore. <laughs> so it's learning by exploring, not learning by doing. We need to believe for new ideas and trust from the society for our new ideas. Believe in new ideas. The, the, the founder of, of Sony said, a market cannot be studied. The moment you study a market is that the consumer has in his mind a product that can be already answered their need. So that's why we can study to have a reference. Ford said it. If I would have asked my consumer what they would, would they need, they would not tell me a car. They will say, faster horses. That's what I would have asked. So that's why when we have disruptive ideas, we need to sustain and have faith. The thing is that we need to generate small prototypes so we fail fast, we fail cheap, and we can achieve. Let's go for the yellow card questions. Now the challenge. Key questions. Who completed their yellow card? One here, two there. Nobody completed their yellow card? SubhanAllah, nobody has questions. We have one, two, three, four. You know what we say in Asia? In Asia you say, a good, a good answer closed the windows of the past. An amazing question opens the door of the future. So we need to build questions and foster questions. So I'll go, wait. All right, my question is, why is the youth not giving trust and love in Muslim communities? Why is the youth not giving trust and love in Muslim communities today? Why youth are not having trust and love in the Muslim community? Why don't we show love <laughs> and trust towards our youth so we don't make it visible? I think that's, I think love, we have it in our, in our brotherhood. The thing is that we need to show it in a different way. <laughs> Another question you have? How to, how to motivate the youth who want to become self-reliant? How can we help youth to be self-reliant? Give them a space to explore and experiment. Give them a challenge or ask them to raise a challenge. If we start with small schools, there's a great program called Design for Change. In primary school, kids go in their neighborhood. They go around. We apply this in Morocco. We created this in, uh, in Spain, around the world. Kids walk in the streets. They see something that they, not, they do not accept. The teacher moderate the conversation, raise one challenge by the kids. Kids need to fund, for example, if they say, the park is not clean. Okay, now find money to make the park clean. Kids start to, to create their own postal cards. They find the money, sell to their parents and everything, came back with the money, clean the park. Realize the day after that the park was again, <laughs> like uh, not clean. So the kids, instead of getting really mad, they realized that they did not tackle the problem the right way. It's not about cleaning, it's about educating. So they started to create posters and forms for them to tackle this. 
When they do this and we support them, they get trust. They get self-esteem and resiliency. You had a question, Mary. To know what is the limitation for every dream that I want to pursue, like the passions. There are some passions I just want to do, some government policy that stops you from doing it. So I want to know more. Thank you, Rick. I like to think about government policy, like people stopping you. When we started the hub, um, we went, it's really interesting, and I'm going to show you two stories. When we were in London and started the hub, we sent a postcard to the most wealthy people in, uh, in the UK. We said, and that was like in 2006, we're generating social entrepreneurs, we're changing the world from the UK. Do you want to take a coffee with us? P.S. We pay the coffee. We had answers from the most wealthiest people over there, and in only a few days, we raised 900,000 pounds. That in three years, we lost 1.5 million pounds. We went back to those people, and we shared the story, and we told them how we understood why it didn't work. And these people supported us, we funded, and now we changed the model of the hub. When we were in Spain, we went, we did the same thing, and we had books. We, had, we were famous now. We sent this, and we sent a postcard with the book, with everything that we did. The answer was, good luck. Thanks for the book. So what we decided to do is that we cannot wait for the ecosystem to be ready, but we can provoke it. So what we decided to do was to bring people that we know, we make them experiment the, uh, the hub, in the lab, we didn't explain what is it. We make them experiment it. They loved it. We said, okay, now bring two people that inspires you and tell us one person that we need to bring that is out there, is famous, that would bring in. What we decided to do with the funding, we went for the banking. We went for the biggest companies. What happened in Spain? Financial crisis. So we raised the fund with 35 small entrepreneurs and our youngest investor had 16 years old. She said, I had 2,500 euros. I believe in that project. Can I put in it? So we said, wait, we're going to change the financial model. <laughs> so you can put your money in, and we accept it. And that showed us that there's different ways to raise money. It becomes a great storytelling around us. And that's what we did. Creating communities, making experience, stop talking about what you're going to do, experiment it. When we went to see the CEO of IKEA to tell them, this is what we're going to do. And I explained it and I explained it. And more I was explaining, more he was like. And suddenly he told me, he said, Lotfi, you know, it's like if you go back in the 50s and you talk about internet, I cannot picture it in my head. I said, you CEO of IKEA. You know? But he said, I cannot picture it. So this is when we stop talking about it and we start doing it. And this is where things start to move. Hi. We, we see many positive benefits from technology, right? But at the same time, we do see some negatives. And it seems to be that we're becoming more social virtually, but kind of less social physically. I mean, you can sit at a table of young people and you can see every single one of them sitting on their phones but they're sitting right next to someone they don't know and they're not interested in getting to know them. So how do we balance the positives and the negatives of society on young people? Yeah, now, in technology and something like just commercials. Before, when someone was seeing commercials, you thought that if I take this, I'm going to be amazing. And slowly, education comes in, maturity, community maturity comes in, and allowed people to understand, this is a commercial, make your research, <laughs> talk with people, see if the product is really good. Same with technology. People are starting to understand now, by self-management, that internet is not the only thing. We need to connect physically. We need to, to connect with the people. And that's why Facebook worked hard. It worked so well. Why? Because it says, where, who are your friends? Your real friends, share with them online. It's not like, hi, my name is Pokemon35. I look like Brad Pitt, 
and suddenly this is what you have. Is that, that's how is that? No, it's like this is Latvi. Yeah, I know. Hey, yeah, it's it's my friend. Yeah, he was my he was supposed to be my friend in high school. He's not my friend like out of my Facebook connection. But that's what people are nurturing. So we need what we need to trust is our capacity of young people to also mature on this. But it's true. The problem you go like, and we have it like yeah, last night at the dinner. Everybody was sitting. Some people could see the show. Other no. What would they all do? Go to the internet. You know, with our mobiles, answer emails. Because we have to show that we are occupied. Because we're shy people. We're naturally shy people. That's why when we create creative spaces, it's allowed to people to connect in a natural way. Good? I will go with it. The, there was a girl over there, and after I will go with you. Come here. Hello. Um, I, I've started a business, and I want to expand it in the Philippines tomorrow. So the question here is that when I develop and developing, so the, the problem is the culture, the perception, and the geographic. So how to crack down their perception when it's in the village, and how to motivate them to be the entrepreneur, and you know, and they are in Gen Y. I will go back to the example uh, of the hub because it's, I will go back to start with small people. Don't reach out to everyone. Start to reach out for those who have curiosity. When we started the hub in, in Spain, 80% of young people wanted to work for government. 80% of young people wants to work for government. You say, like, okay, we want to build a space for social entrepreneurship. <laughs> and now no, no, it's not only changing, like, we need those. <laughs> so what happened? We started with those people. Instead of saying you have to be an entrepreneur, you can be an entrepreneur, we hosted a session and we asked, what is your passion? What do you stop? What your one skill that make you different? And what is a challenge that you would like to tackle on? So we brought a community of people and to practice like um, collaborative methodologies, they started to work and say, yeah, I have an idea now. And people started to doing it. So it's like we need to stop talking about innovation. Innovation is a consequence. I cannot say I'm innovative. Why? Because innovation is impact. Society tells us if this is an innovation, if this is, has a great impact. I can say I'm creative, but the kids are naturally creative. Now we have the seven hats creative techniques. Now we have the seven foot creative techniques. Now we have, we have so many techniques. But kids, we are naturally creative. The only thing we need to put is go back in action, not think about what my father is going to think, what my boss is going to think. So stop talking about what we expect and start exploring with them. Great experience. They go and reach for people in their community. Bring me more people if you have a good experience. I just wanted to give it three points. Create awareness, which is very important. And then bringing them to the knowledge center, which means you go for a schooling or something that must develop the knowledge among the young people. And the final day I say that how to bring young community in the income generation. So that is the next. How to bring young community, can you see the last one, please? In the income generation. Awareness and bring income. Another question? Sure. Okay. Yeah, it's a kind of a personal question, but uh, I have a nine years old brother, and he is very curious. He loves to know anything about everything. Um, he goes to watch the documentaries on National Geographic or Discovery. So, and he loves to learn like new languages. So, I really want to know how to make like real something out of him, since he have this like passion inside him. How to sustain passion or curiosity in young people. You know, a young person between two and three years old do not care about results. A young person between two and three years old in that age, what they want to do is explore. They draw, they build, they erase. They build, they destroy. And we go, what do you do? It was really beautiful. They go like, huh? And we as parents, we start to say, that was beautiful. So they forget about the process, and they focus on the results. 
So what we need to do is to go back and enjoy the process. So what we need to do is, with your little brother, is ask him, why you watch this? What do you like? What do you want to solve? What he needs to do is to pass toward action and exploring more. If he's only absorbing, it's like when I watch a movie. Like, and, and we are now, you know, this society today, we are click activism. You know? I'm online and I go, yes, I'm for the Palestine cause. Click here. Yes, I want to solve uh, the, the trees in Brazil. Click there. You know, we're like so far activism. We watch the things. But when, how can we move in one action? So what I'm asking you is like, how can you support him to play with things, to create things, to take one thing, play with it, he completes it, move to something else. And that will be very interesting because we need to open those kind of creativity and sustain it. And it's going to work. So if you watch Discovery Channel, what do you learn from that? What can you do with that? Ask question, and he's going to answer. And if he says, I don't know, okay, that's good, because it's going to stay there. I don't know, it's a good answer. And, and we say it in, in, in the Muslim, we say, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa only Allah knows, you know? I can give my answer, but Allah alam. That's humility, and we need to bring back that humility. Humility allows people to think, to share. Have the courage to ask questions. And not only have answers. Anybody else? Time to go for food, right? <laughs> okay, we're going to stop it here. We're going to have the rollout out there. We're gonna, we would like to ask questions for you guys. So we're going to see the ready for us symbol. So please come to us. And it would be amazing if we can go to your country and learn from your own stories that we can share from the rest of the world. Thank you a lot.